So the one thing I'm going to mention is video games and social media are really significant sources of stress. Now, again, Tova, I'm looking at you. Great feedback. We know that at times, especially now, our kids need that outlet. So I'm not saying keep them away from video games, but what I am saying is try to make sure that they're not on their video games or on social media before they go to bed. Because when, as I'm gonna share with you, what they need to be doing, they need that release of serotonin and reading or calming activities bring them down and keep them in that space of calmness so that they can fall asleep and so that their sleep is going to be is going to be restorative so what we need to do is we need to help them down regulate when they're overly stressed mais nous devons aider les élèves à mieux réguler lorsqu'ils sont moins excités so down regulate when they're stressed and up regulate when they're under stimulated. So how do we get them there? So I wanna share, this is what the continuum looks like. We know that our kids go from being asleep to being flooded. We don't want them sleepy and we don't want them flooded. So how do we keep them in that space in the middle? So those are the strategies that we're gonna look at. What are the greatest sources of stress? The greatest sources of stress are les lumières, bruit, stress social, désordre, et les jeux vidéo. Those are the greatest sources of stress. Light is a source of stress. Noise is a source of stress. A chaotic work environment. So I was mentioning, because I, I, I practiced this session to make sure that it works, I went into a class and you know these kids have all these different mechanisms to keep them alert and i was in a class where they had that gooey stuff so they were playing with the gooey stuff and it was all over their desk and they were trying to pay attention while they're trying to lift that gooey stuff off their desk so an, a disorderly work environment causes stress so we want to address we want to make sure that their environment is such that it's not gonna bring on stress. We also wanna help our kids focus on what it feels like to be, folk, to be calm. And the best way to do it is to close your eyes and think of that place that brings you calm. So let's see if we have any, you know, I, I volunteered that what brings me calm is when I picture water. I love seeing water. So I don't know if anyone wants to share, what's that image that brings you calm? Does anybody want to share? Do we have a hands up? Claudine. We do, someone also, someone also commented rain. Rain. Okay. Claudine. Paysage. Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a quelque chose d'autre? What brings you calm? Having, uh, have, having a few minutes in a meeting with adults without my two little kids screaming <laughs> at each other across the table. This is right. total. Well, and I think your kids deserve a, pri deserve a prize. So, <laughs> so what we need to help them do. Uh, did somebody want to add something? Oui, moi. Oui, une belle oui. musique. Une belle musique. Une belle musique. So what we want to help our kids do when they're feeling stressed is close your eyes and picture what brings you that sense of calm. We also need to teach them strategies. Breathing is wonderful. But remember, when they're feeling stressed, it's not a good time to bring them down. It's before the stressful situation. The other thing that's really important is we're not supposed to ignore the stress. We're supposed to focus on it, accept it, feel where it feels in our bodies. How do you feel when you're stressed? And then let it go. So we need to help them upregulate 
When students feel under stimulated, we need to get up, walk around, go outside. So if your kids are online and our classes are 40 minutes long, if they can't manage the 40 minutes, then you could set a timer where they sit down and focus. It's almost like you make deals with yourself. I'm going to focus for 15 minutes and then I'm going to get up and maybe do a couple of jumping jacks or even go outside. And then I'm going to come back and focus again. So exercise really helps you when you're feeling on that end of sleepy. Alors maintenant, les étapes qu'on peut suivre, on peut recadre la, recadre la situation. Vous semblez vous inquiéter de reconnaître les tensions. Il est compréhensible que cette situation soit difficile. Réduisez tous les facteurs de stress possible. So to the extent possible, lower the lights. Try to the best of our ability to turn off the noise. Make sure that our learning environment, the desk, I just cleaned up my office. I spent so much time here and I noticed that there were so many books and papers that it was making me feel stressed. Prendre conscience de stress. Demandez à votre enfant d'expliquer ce qu'il provoque le stress. Comment le ressent-tu? Et finalement, répondre, développer des stratégies propres à chaque enfant et à chaque situation. Because every situation is different. We also have to change the dialogue. When your child says, I can't, they need to hear your words that will eventually become their thoughts. So could we help them change I can't to when this happens, I need to think about. So they need us, the adults, to help them with the dialogue. Instead of saying I can't, there's a dialogue that we can have in our head, which is I don't like this situation. These are some of the things that I can do. So I'm going to stop. I, I, I see only one comment. I think we share. Are there any questions or comments? We're nearing the end. Does anybody have a question or want to share a comment? We're good? Ready to move on? Like I tell my McGill students, give me, give me a thumbs up because I need to know how we're doing. So to move on, there are other ways that we can help our kids. Help them find a safe space where they can be calm. So it's either a safe space in your head, think about the rain, think about the water, or actually go to a calming space to bring down that level of stress. The next thing, routines are really, really important. Homework, same time, same place. The extent to which we can keep routines, we all love routines. By the way, the reason that young kids, I think all of you, if not most of you, are high school parents, but the reason why our kids love to be read the same story over and over again is because they know what's coming. So our kids all have their favorite story, good night moon, whatever that favorite story is, but it's the routine. It's knowing what's coming. The other thing, when you see that they're down-regulated, sleepy, get them to move, go outside, do a couple of jumping jacks, and then we have to observe the triggers. So what happens is that there are some triggers that may not be obvious to you as parents. Clothing causes stress. If your clothes are uncomfortable, and that's less obvious, so we want to think, is, the, is there something about the working environment that's causing your child stress? 